So I started off a million dollars in debt. What happened with you and Pretty Ricky? So I just wanted my money, man. To be honest, I, I you know I stepped to their father and I said, yo, man, I wanna, I wanna separate my money, and I want my own place. And um, he said, you ain't got no money. I said, what? He said, yeah, you ain't got no money. Cause then they replace you. Yeah, they were. I was just about to say yeah. that. I think that was the big confusion. But what they couldn't replace was your songwriting. And my sound. Well, you got your flowers at that uh, yeah. versus, though. You was a little aggressive during that battle, too. Yeah. For me? Yeah. Like, you wanted to fight. But y'all know who the real fucking goats is in this motherfucker tonight. Y'all need to, need to lower your tone, dog, and, <laughs> and, and tighten up, because I'll tighten you up if I see you. You understand what I'm saying? Well, let's okay. address you and Fallon. Are you guys together? No. That's my friend. And then you got Jalen under the fucking comments. Oh with, man, with the with the with the laughing. What what this got to do with you, man? I paid up for music. I I paid on my hard on money. What what you tying yourself into this for, brother? They got nothing to do with you, bro. He yeah, just wanted yeah. to let you know, obviously. It's just like if you're an insecure man, you're an insecure man. Welcome to the Baller Show podcast, available everywhere you get your podcast. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share our YouTube page at Baller Alert TV. I go by the name of Ferrari Simmons. I go by the name you know BT. OCT, where that? Pleasure, Pete, in the building. Hey! What's up, sir? Rigga, rigga, rigga. What's happening, hey. man? Hey, what's happening? What's happening? We, 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 we appreciate you pulling up on us. Uh, BT called you out via text, and you you responded. So this is my dog, yeah, man. Yeah, we here. We here. Thank you for pulling up on us, man. Where's Pleasure P from? Miami. Okay. Everybody know that. Shit. Everybody know that. <laughs> Shit. If he a Florida that. boy too. I'm a Florida boy. I knew that. But what people know, don't you know. know who Marcus Cooper is. So tell us about who Marcus was growing up. I guess uh, from a musical background. Mm -hmm. So my mom and dad, um, they both did music. They were in a band together. My my father was um, he was in a group called Silver Platinum along with Michael Sterling, who did Lovers and Friends record and all those records and stuff like that. So I just been around. You know, music my whole life. Was your dad a singer? Um, he plays the keys and he's a songwriter. He's a okay. composer. My mom, she's a singer. Yeah. Oh, how long? Okay. How long have you been singing? Since I was nine. When did you knew? When did you know? Like, oh damn, I could actually sing. When I was nine. So, like, what happened? Do you remember? <laughs> like, did you just start saying? <laughs> nah, the first song I started singing was "I Would Never Lie" by Immature. I was just like trying to be like Immature. Okay. And then my uncle heard me in the shower. He was like, "Yo." I had me sing for my mom. Then they put me in the talent show. I won first place, and ever since then, I've been a singer. Mm -hmm. Did your dad start forming you guys together with you and your brothers? Nah, nah. My my dad wasn't pretty much in the picture like that. You know what oh, I'm okay. saying? But um, you know, we would see him from time to time. Now, was your name always Pleasure P? Nah, nah, nah. So, so what was your what was your first? <laughs> so my first artist name was Pretty Boy. So if you ever listen to Grind on Me. You'll hear Baby Blue say, pretty Ricky, pretty boy, doing pretty good things. I was pretty boy back then. And then it was like, nah, man, we got to do something different. Your voice gives women pleasure. You know what I'm saying? So you know what? Let's start there. And then guys call me P, so it's pleasure and P. You know what I'm saying? Who said that? Just ladies and, you know, everybody. It was like a group decision. Gotcha. Yeah. So back up. Okay, so you said you were nine doing music and... um. You know, you grew up in that. Where did Pretty Ricky come? Did you grow up with those guys or? Oh, no, no, no. So um, along my journey, um, I was bad as a, you know, juvenile. So I went to a, um, a, a juvenile prison. I wrote a lot of songs in there, like Shorty Would You Be Mine, um, Feel the Rush, AJ Nothing But A Number, stuff like that. So when I got out, I was looking for a, um, you know, for, for a label. And I um I was shopping my stuff everywhere. People kind of like knew the songs when I was in school and stuff like that. I would you know hand out my demos and stuff like that. And um I ran into their father, and um he had a record label. And I was like, they father whose father? Uh, Baby Blue, spectacular. Okay. Yeah, they father. His okay. name Blue. Got it. Blue Star. Blue Star. The album name I think. Yep. So um ran into them at a talent show. And it was like, yo man, um you got to come to the studio. Whatever the case may be, went to the studio. And the first song we recorded was Grind On Me. And ever since then, I was in the group. When did Slickham come in the group? Was he already in the group? There was already a group called The Mavericks. Okay. And then you came Okay, in. so Pretty Ricky and The Mavericks. So where did Pretty Ricky come from? Did you bring that to the table? So Pretty Ricky was 
Well, okay, he's a he's he's like our older brother. His name is, um, well, damn, he was pretty Ricky, and him and him and the father got into it. It was like I put too much money in the name. You know what? We gonna name the whole group Pretty Ricky, so that people think that it's one person. But then when they find out it's a different, you know, individual, they become more interested in. Mm. Did you like that? Did y'all agree with that? Yeah, it was cool with that. Okay. So Grind On Me was the first record that y'all recorded together. Yeah. That's crazy. Let me tell you something. Blue Star classic album. Like, yeah. yeah, I agree. You said you wrote Shawty Would You Be Mine classic song. You mm-hmm. wrote. Um, I wrote all those songs. You wrote all of You the wrote songs? all the songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was that process? Did you have them and you came in with that? or? Well, some songs I had already. Um, mm-hmm. And then some songs we just kind of wrote on the spot. You know, stuff yeah, like no that. I wonder why they signed you. Me and Static <laughs> will be in the room and we just feed off each other. Static and, Major. Yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. Yeah. like that, yeah. Static Major is a heavy hitter, well, was a heavy heavy hitter, you know, responsible for, like, you know, the Rock the Boats, uh, Aaliyah's sound, um, Mm -hmm. very, um, you know, with that album, you got that nostalgia with that. That was classic album. I love that album. At first, it was like Baby Blue and me recorded, like, for a week it took us to record Ground on Me because it was just, he was was the engineer, and it was just me and him, like Batman and Robert in there, you know what I'm saying? And then once... We got signed, and that's when everybody else came. But pretty much before we got signed, we pretty much had a lot of the songs already done and completed. When the album came out, did you guys believe that it was going to be received as well as it as it did? Yeah, we already knew. We was so y'all knew y'all was going to be stars. We was already running. Like, we would do performances and stuff like that. We was already running from girls, and they'll come beating on our windows. And, you know, like, we, we, we kind of seen the transition. You know, so y'all was like local stars already. Pretty much. It was it's a, a lot of videos stars. of guys doing the little dances and humping the ground and humping the beds now, that was to you guys' music. At that time, you had B2K, but when Pretty Ricky came, you guys were young and you guys were talking about you know the kind of content you guys were talking about. I was talking about, about sex. And, and being the only... <laughs> I didn't hear too many like young artists doing that. Like, you had B2K, but they were like teetering the line. Well, they us, were very buttoned up. That's what we did at home. Like, what, is that, what else is there to do? What do you do in high school and in, in, in college? Man, people used to be at the skin hey, ring and grind it on. That's how you go to the movies. <laughs> you, go, you go, you take a girl to the beach or something. Like, you know, just whatever. Just like, yeah. That's no, what we did. Yeah. But then Pleasure P started making solo records. Well, we was a group. Mm-hmm. Everything was going good in the middle of, um, let me see, the, the middle of, I want to say, the Late Night Special album. That's, that's another when, classic. That's when things got a little, egos started flying. and Amongst people, each other? People taking credit for other people's work, and it was a lot going on. And um, I just wanted my money, man, to be honest. I, you know, I stepped to... Their father and I say, yo, man, I want to separate my money because we would be so busy on the road. We don't have time mm-hmm. to spend no money or nothing. But when you get home, it's like you got to stay in the house. You can't do this. You can't do that. It's just controlling, controlling, controlling. I'm a grown man from the streets. I got a kid of my own at the time. I got mm-hmm. family, too, to take care of. So I said, I want to separate my money, and I want my own place. And um, he said, you ain't got no money. I said, what? I said, say, yeah, you ain't got no money. It cost for this, that, that. So they gave me an itemized list of, because we all lived in one house. So if this was a cup, he charged me $100 for this. This was a fork, $200 for that. It, it was itemized. This was some bullshit. So it was on some Don Cheetah type <laughs> shit. It was some bullshit. So all y'all were living in a house in Miami? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same house you see on Cribs, if you ever seen Cribs. I remember that. I saw, yeah, I remember the that. The same house. What was your reply to that when he was itemizing everything? I know that got, got you frustrated. It, yeah, I was hot. I was like, well, damn, well, you know, and then we, we had signed the contract because he was like, you know, for Atlantic, I need y'all to sign this, man, because... You know, we just that's that's the that's the OG. Yeah, you know? because y'all trust him. Yeah, he a street nigga. We you know mm-hmm. that, we never you know he gave us opportunity. He mm-hmm. the one put up the money. To this day, I still thank him for that. Mm-hmm. But he would you know he was wrong. You know what How I'm saying? How long was the contract? Huh? How long was it? I think it was like five albums or something like that. Five albums. That's five that's albums. standard. That was kind of standard back in the yeah, album. but they didn't make but, it to five albums. But but the, but the unfair part was, you know, he was a part of our records. You know, like so so let's say. Four of us wrote the record. He, he's number five he on the record. He's number five on the record. So, <laughs> you know, it's because he put his money up, and then he, he, you know, he owned half of the publishing. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, damn. Then he owned half the master, 
Then this, you know what I'm saying? And then each, then it's four of y'all. And this already. is four of us already. So now it's five y'all. Y'all got to split the money five split. different ways. We, gotta, we didn't get to split none. He took a hundred percent of everything. And then paid y'all. No, we never get paid. I didn't never get paid from him. So wait, you wait. But <laughs> so you did, never got paid. Nah, we we know no better, bro. Get get a B in my check. He endorsed the sign the back. We'll make sure y'all money straight. We'll make sure y'all, you know, y'all y'all just gonna blow it. How old he, were you guys? I was in my early 20s. I was like 20, 20, mm-hmm. 21, 20. But you guys were living a life that was different from where you came from. So is yeah. that why you guys did not question anything? Yeah, so they lived in the suburbs. I come, you know, I'm hood. You know what I'm saying? So he wanted all of us, his excuse was he wanted all of us death so that if we get a call and got to do something, we ain't got to go get one from over here. And one from over so here. So we just kind of, it was like a frat house almost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you got this information in the itemized list kind of like a, when you woke up a little bit kind of like Ice Cube did in NWA I was Ice Cube did, did you NWA. go back and tell your other group members <laughs> yes I did I did I had a conversation with them but they couldn't cause that's their father so they couldn't uh. understand it at, 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 at the time so it's tension between us and then at that time I was doing records with like I had, like I, I had a, a lot of street records so I had Get You Up With Plies <sighs> that's I had my Les favorite Five one, with Yo Gotti I had released Prostitute. Wayne wanted to sign me, so I was around Wayne and them all the time. And I just kind of just stayed on the road. Did your own, I, I put that out, and um, that became top 20. And, and you know, I did that independently. And then from then on, it was just like. At this point, there has to be tensions in the air when you going back to these guys and telling them what you've learned. They're not believing you or they're, they're so, you know, they're very uh, protective over their father. What what happens next? Like, how do you get out of this? I listen. I didn't even know what was gonna happen next. I ain't, you know. But I, I'm the type of person. If I'm unhappy about something, I'm gonna have. Why would anybody leave something successful? You know what I'm saying, like, come on, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying. So, um, after that, it was just like, you know what, bro. Like, we stopped talking really, and um, I went my way. They went their way. So you just left, and yeah. you went solo. I didn't want to be solo. I said all. I, all I said to them is, and I, and you know, I sat down with Baby Blue. In the studio, and I said, "Bro, I ain't leaving the group. I just want my own place. Cause we around each other on 24/7. the road, twenty four seven. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm right. I need my own space. That's you got kids, yeah, you're you're growing yeah, up, growing up, yeah. You your own me? space. I don't want to run training some girls no more. I want my <laughs> own. I don't want to <laughs> slick them. <laughs> <laughs> day, yeah. I don't wanna. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, enough is enough yeah. right now. You know what I'm saying? With all due respect, but it had I to be. A, I was gonna say it had to be a lot for you because you had a lot of success with them, but you had a lot of success on your feature game. Like your feature game was crazy. Yeah, the crazy thing about it, he was turning down the features. So, like, let's say Birdman got me on a song called Bossy, right? It was on on his album, and um, he said 150 grand. If you gonna pay, you gonna pay. If not, I'ma make him say no. And that was just would you oh. get the money though for the feature? No, man. That's what Even so, that? No. So he so he was kind of like suppressing like your career. Start like, him a little want. bit. Yeah. yeah, sending letters to radio stations, telling them not to play my songs because because I'm signed to them. Like all kind of. That's what I was gonna say. All kind of stuff. It couldn't. Man. You couldn't just leave. No. Nah, oh, I had to go through a whole litigation. And so this was like death row. It was a, it was like death row minus the ass whooping because ain't nobody yeah. wouldn't ain't nobody put their hands on me. But how did you get away? Like, cause you couldn't just leave. Oh, so I ran into Brian McKinney. He's a um, football player. He had just you know signed like a seventy million dollar deal with the Vikings. And he played. He played from. He played we, for Miami Hurricanes. Yep, he played for. Yep. Yeah. So we started a record label called Swag Entertainment. So I told him what I was going through, and he was like, "Okay, seventy thousand. Let's get the lawyer fee popping." No, Damn! So whatever you need, it was just like whatever I needed. So he bought you out of your contract. Yeah, he did. Damn. Yeah. Okay, so you you get out your deal and yeah, we go through this litigation and all this kind of stuff, and um, they were now going around saying, yeah, he signed to us, so whatever he make is, and I'm like, bro, I put this record out top twenty, and you know, I, I did all the work myself, so um, boyfriend number two is what you talking about? He did you wrong? This did, is you wrong. did you wrong? Okay, so. Then it's like um, he was willing to settle, you know, settle out of the, the the suit. I was like getting so much money at the time. I was like, you know what? If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. So you know what? He go five hundred thousand. You go. You your gave way, me five hundred thousand. You go your way. I go. So I started off a million dollars in debt with my first album, just off of the recording. And 
giving him that. You know what I'm saying? And then wow. everything that comes with it, marketing and promotions and right. stuff like that. You know, so. I so did your football homie, he 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 sent them that money or, or was that with the new that, label? No, that came from the label. Oh, okay. That came from the label once. Okay. You know, he agreed mm -hmm. to, to settle me. It was part of the settlement. Right. But now you're in the hole. Million dollars. And yeah, so now you got to really get the get back in. So now, uh, I Did You Wrong is out. When does Boyfriend Number 2 come out? Right after right that? Right after that. So Boyfriend Number 2 comes out and skyrockets. Number one. Number and, I one. Know, and I know he's like, damn. So now, <laughs> so now how, it, how it's supposed Facts. to go is they put out their record, right? And then the next six months, I put out my record. So they got their time to put out their record, right? And um, during the process of us, uh, um, you know, doing the litigation thing, you know, they ended up, um, well, he, well, the dad, what is it called? He tried to uh, depose the CEO of Atlantic Records after they gave him all this money to do. Mm -hmm. He was winning. Like, I, bro, I couldn't even, like, one day, bro, I swear to God, we were, um, we was doing, um, we was doing, we were supposed to go to London. And y'all, I'm like, bro, I, my, my rent due is like, bro, it's, it's around this time. My rent due, I got to, you know, pay my rent. He never gave me the money from the shows that we did or whatever the case may be. I need my money. He ain't give me the money, so I ain't, I ain't make the flight. So the label calls. Hey, why didn't you make the flight? And I told him why. They said, how much your rent is? I said, $1,200. That's all. Come on. <laughs> You platinum. You play. You got a platinum group now. Platinum. You we arguing you know, like when you really look at it, bro. Like how Damn. ridiculous is that, bro? Yeah. So the label not even knowing what's really going on. So when they find out, they're like, yeah, this man, <laughs> this man off his shit. You know they said, I mean? said shit twelve hundred dollars. And I know like, you gotta be. I know you mentally gotta be frustrated because my nigga ego and stuff like that. Was just starting to change. Everybody, that's when I learned everybody can handle handle fame and stardom. Yeah, because y'all superstars at this point, right? Yeah. We put what the fuck we supposed to be arguing? Facial we recognition did, everywhere you we go. We did everything we supposed to do. Made the right songs, did the right performances, did the interviews. You know, yeah. four cities in one day. We did everything we supposed to do, brother. To what? That was to me. That would that would be my only issue. But outside of that, um, he's not a bad guy. He was just mm -hmm. you know he he everybody makes mistakes and he was. Making his transition into, you know. When does Pleasure Peace start making money and when are you in the green? I'm already making money um, at, at um, Digirong and stuff like that because I'm hot in the streets. So I would just, yo, I'm on, I'm on every show with Yo Gotti, Flies. Geez, I'm the only R&B singer on these tours and stuff like that. So that's what made them like, like the label, you know, back me. Like, oh. Okay. And then they, so they put out their they record. It flopped. And then... My record came out, and it just—it was like a competition. I wasn't in competition with nobody, but the people was in competition with me. Cause then they replace you. Yeah, they. Were. I was just about to say yeah. that. I think that was the big confusion, and I think that's <laughs> what really caused you know <laughs> the they records to kind of not do well because that, it it was like a random guy. Yeah. It was two replacements. Yeah, it was two, yeah, it Chase. was. But what they couldn't replace was your songwriting. And my sound. Your yeah. Sound. Cause the, the group so was hard. about the sound. And the group was about those kind of songs. So when they dropped that album, you could see the difference between the two. And then when I come out with my album, you can see the difference between you listen, you can hear the difference between who did what. And yeah. Yeah, I think we was all confused as fans when we was watching 106 in Park. And then this random guy comes out singing in the group, like, man, well, who the hell is this, man? If you know this, if you know this, if you know this, you watch 106 in Park at the, you know, during the end, I wouldn't be saying nothing. I'd just be quiet. I'd just, you know, it'd, it'd be something like, you know, something happened before, like before. So I just don't even want to be there, but mm -hmm. I was there. I respect the way that you handle your business because you know how good and creative that you are, but you like just kind of like let people who want to act out do that, but you go handle your business. Like it's not, it's kind of like a Jay-Z type of thing. Like people around him want that shine and he just let them do it. But then he goes and, does like a big deal. Now, speaking of big deals, what was the deal with uh that you had got when you went to the uh label when it was just you and your label? Was that what was that deal? Like did they get fifty percent of your publishing or uh, no, you know what I did the deal with Warner Chapel. So matter of fact, it was a um it was a continuation kind of deal from what he did, you know. Okay. And um it was a, it was, you know, it was a regular publishing deal. But 
I wrote songs like Lollipop and other songs like, you know, Wild Ones for Flo Rida and A lot of know, people don't know you wrote Lollipop. Other songs like that that kinda saved me too. How did you get that? Was it was, was your relationship with uh, Static got you that? Um, me and Static was working on my album. Um, Lollipop was actually my record um at first. You know, um me and Static wrote it together. Came from, you know, one of uh one of them nights at the club. Messing around in the studio <laughs> and stuff like that, and then um, we recorded it. But I just, I just didn't feel it fit. Same beat for the album. Yeah, same, same beat. So same y'all beat. went to the studio. List said she wanted to lick me like a lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> so you wrote the whole song or just the hook? It's certain elements of the song that's that that, that I wrote that's still in there. But Wayne, I obviously did what it needed to. You know, mm-hmm. is your vocals on there? Like, man, how do you want to fuzz? Nah, that, that's nah, all static. Okay, that's all static on okay, that okay. part. Why do uh, artists not want people to know that they have songwriters? Because people be fucking with us, bro. Like Got people it. be fucking. Like, bro, the more the more I step the way, the more peaceful my life is, bro. Okay. I swear to God, bro. Mm-hmm. People just be doing stupid stuff out of nowhere, just fucking with, me, fucking with me for no reason, dog. I just, I don't want to be bothered. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just leave me alone, bro. And that's what I meant, staying out the way. You just do your business and stay out that's the way. That's it. I, ain't got, I don't need to brag. My bank account will tell me what, what it is, but the people around me, that those are the people that I love and care about, so I'm 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 happy with that, bro. I don't need no flowers from everybody else. Like well, that. you got your flowers at that uh, well, versus, though, because okay. I feel like that was your moment to shine. That was the moment, like... You already had your moments. I feel like people respect you and respect your craft. You are a legend to me. Uh, but I felt like when I watched that Versus, I really watched it because Sammy's my guy and I'm a fan of yours. But I really, <laughs> we had we had one element that went a little left, but you were really shining that night. Thanks, bro. Thanks. What happened to RSVP? Nothing. We still working. Yeah. I thought y'all was coming out with an album, videos. We was. Until Sammy, was. Until Sammy dropped the tour in a damn... Uh, 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 you know, he dropped a tour and an album and a single out of nowhere, yeah. so we kind of just pushed it back a little longer. So, so now, I'm, so now I'm dropping my, you know, <laughs> single now, called you know what I'm saying, and 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 drop you know this tour. I'm on a tour with Mario and Neo starting September tonight. Now that's gonna be crazy. So you know, Champagne and Roses tour. That's, that's a big deal. So after that, maybe we can get back to what we initially started to do. Now, so wait, y'all doing everything out of spite because Sammy dropped his, and now you like, okay, you want to do this? I'm about to go on my own tour now. No, nah, actually, no. I'm gonna tell you the craziest thing that happened. So, like maybe what a week or two ago, I was in the house sleep. Matter of fact, I was. I was matter of fact. I went to Strokers. I was at Strokers. <laughs> strip club, by the way. Yeah, strip club. I was at Strokers. No um, it, we, we were celebrating John Silver's birthday So mm-hmm. Neo's there Everybody there And his role manager's like Yo what you got coming up I said man I'm just about to drop This new stuff And whatever whatever. Alright I'm gonna give you a call I got, I got something for you You know what I'm saying So then uh, I go home I go to sleep And I wake up To a fire alarm going off So I look around And smoke everywhere Smoke everywhere So I jump up Oh what the fuck What the fuck I'm Looking for my phone Grab my phone And I, I run out of my room And I look and it's coming from down, like downstairs. So I run out of the, you know, run out of the house, go to the back. The whole basement is on fire. I'm like, wow. So I call 911. It's an uncontrollable fire. Call 911, ambulance, everybody come, you know. And as soon as I plug my phone up and get in the car while the ambulance and everybody there, yo, you wanna do this tour? This is what we got. And I just booked the tour just like that. So it wasn't out of spite. It's just when you do, I don't know. I don't know. God just, I don't know. Who started the fire? Um, it wasn't. It wasn't um nobody that started the fire because I was the only person home. But um, it was like an electrical problem. It was like uh, very very hot that day, and something just was everything good. The outlet outside just caught on fire. That yeah. was a very random. Yeah, story. I was going to say that's. What, <laughs> is your I'm house like, is okay it? now? Um, I don't know. I haven't been there. What up, it's your man Pleasure P, and you are now tuned into the Ball Alert Show. So when Ray J was hitting them notes, man, <laughs> what were you doing and how were you feeling? I was backing them up. That's my brother, man. You was backing them up. You, you, I you had no to. No kind of way. I, I mean, I, I did say what I said. I said the ungratefulness when he, you know, Damn, bro. was was like he was dissing our help. Yeah. He was a little aggressive during that battle too. Yeah. With me. Yeah. Like you wanted to fight. 
No, I didn't. It's, sure? it's, for me, it's like they want R and B guys to be a certain kind of way. I'm not that. I'm just me. I you could tell that you was from South. I could tell that you was from the streets. How you was conducting yourself during the uh, the, the it's verses, like playing my Football or basketball, it's a battle. Like it ain't we coming to we coming to just be nice. And you got all the other little R and B people commenting at the end. Like, bro, I don't speak on nobody business like that, dog. You know what I'm saying, y'all. Y'all need to you know, lower your tone, dog, and, and, and tighten up because I'll tighten you up if I see you. You understand what I'm saying? I thought you was I thought you was finna get I active felt, though. I felt like that, but then I'm like, you know what, bro, that's that's this new age thing. I don't really speak on everybody's shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I, I don't do it. Yeah, that is the new I was uh, nervous for you, bro. I thought you was finna get active on Niggas be on trying to well, yeah, they be trying to like I don't know. They be trying to like diss and belittle and sneak diss and that's that's one thing I hate about the like the business. Like it's like you got a problem with me. Let's address it. You know what I'm saying? However you want to address it, let's address it. But they go behind your back and sneak in. It's, it's yeah, no yeah. bitch shit. Well, let's address you and Fallon. Are you guys together? No. Would you post a picture with her? I can't post a picture with and her. And you said you, I it want looks more very of intimate. you. I, ain't, I said I, want, I, I need more of you every moment. Yeah. That okay. Is... That, I wanted you to say it. <laughs> what does that mean? Was that a lyric from your new Maybe song? somewhere in the distance. Yes. Yeah, oh, it's, so she's in your video, music video. It's a song. Oh. So you are hashtag not together. Galaxy. She's your she's your lead in the song. Has, hashtag Galaxy. It's hashtag my guy. Galaxy. You know, I Galaxy. got I got a bunch of calls about that too. I'm good at marketing, man. I'm very good at it. You you definitely are because um, there's right? a lot of people calling I, I think, me. I think a lot of people sold into it. They that bit into it. Was the lyric in the new song? Got it. Pat, it said it said. Hashtag Galaxy. She yeah. posted it. She, she posted to say hashtag Galaxy. I was stuck at the picture. I didn't read all the way through. Yeah, and then she was on the show and she said she had a new boyfriend. So everybody. But she said he was a boxer. You. He said he was a boxer. He's a boxer. I felt like she was lying. Yeah, I, yeah. I definitely felt. You like don't box, do you? Nope. Oh, I, I can fight, but I don't, I don't box. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not an actor, right? Mm, nah, nah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it's safe sometimes. to say. Sometimes. That just to clear any rumor, you and Fallon are not together as a couple. Oh, no, 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 no. But somebody said I seen you. know, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> yes, you may have seen me out with her. That's like after the video shoot, we celebrate and having a good time. Okay. We're friends. That's y'all look, cool. y'all, That's y'all look like y'all got good chemistry, though. People think we look good together, but, you know, I, I can't. Me and her went out together. We look good together, too. People, what, <laughs> we, we, we can't. Go have a drink after this. Facts. I don't, you know, I got something. But you're a pleasure, Pete, though. See, that's a, that's a perception. But it's a couple people that was I'm Marcus, bitter. I'm Marcus Cooper, actually. Oh, here you go. <laughs> Wait, did any exes call you after, uh, you know, that picture a, of you and Fallon went everywhere? A lot of people called me, man. You'd be, you'd be surprised, like, how people, how people, like, won't tell you how they feel, but when some shit go down, they, tell they you. call you. It shows you. Yeah, facts. Like, damn, what the fuck is this? Who, why, what? It's just a picture, right? You could have called me and did Deming to the truth. Yeah, everybody was calling me. I'm like, what the what the hell I got oh, to do with picture, it? Picture, bro. And then and then and then the fact that it was bashing her, bro, and saying all kind of stuff like it's like this is crazy over a picture of a music video. And then you got Jalen under the fucking comments. Oh with, man. With the with this with the laughing. What what this gotta do with you, man? I paid her for music. I I paid her my hard earned money. What what you tying yourself into this for, brother? They got nothing to do with you, bro. A little tender. I mean And I and I think I think Why that, that man fuck with me. He know and he know he knew it was a music video. Why that man fuck uh, with me, man? Maybe so, he's so, participating so, in the No, hoorah. I think he was I think, you know, sometimes people get in their feelings. Tender. He yeah, just wanted yeah. to let you know of obviously. I see him in person. Jalen, man, you running from what us. You say you was coming wait, on the show. What did he say to you in person? Huh? What did he say to you? I mean, <laughs> What can he say to me in person? I, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I just told him, man, it's a music video. He, he was like, you ain't get my permission. I got to get your permission to hire her for a music video, bro. Mm. That that money put food in your daughter's mouth. Look at it like that. Yeah, That's a good way to put it. But when Usher get Kiki Palmer for a video, they don't make a big spectacle. I guess people care that much. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They, don't make, they don't think he fucking Kiki Palmer. No, I don't know. No. Well, he's been through Never. a lot with Fallon, so he just probably, you know, is sensitive about seeing you guys together it and wanted to so called check you. Nah, ain't nobody checking me about nothing. I'm a grown ass man. And it's nothing to check. It's just like if you're an insecure man, you're an insecure man. That's between you and you. I wasn't in y'all bedroom. I don't live with y'all. I don't I wasn't part of y'all arguments. I ain't got nothing to do with anything other than Hey, go to money for a music video. Hey, this is my new single. Thanks for being a part of my new single. 
hey, let's have drinks. So if, if I see you out, see you some shots or something like that. That's, yeah. that's about it. So it was nothing. It's just the internet just kind of blew that picture. Up. Just, a, just a picture. And the lyrical <laughs> from, from a song. Bro, well, let's about talk the, about the record come Galaxy. Come yeah, can we talk about you know, Galaxy? Where did the concept of that come from? Well, Galaxy music is um, just a, a different sound of music that I'm doing. And um, it's like music to where it's not as raunchy, but it's just sexy. It's something to where you got to put your cologne on and light a candle and, you know, just have that kind of vibe. If, you, if you're a smoker, you can smoke to it. It's just, you know, a different style of music that I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, so when is the music video dropping? Um, With Fallon. I'm trying to, I'm shooting for like the eighth, the, 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 oh, yeah, the eighth, the day before I go on tour. Okay. So how many, how many cities um y'all doing on a tour? So far as I think 15 or 16, but they added more days. Ladies, well, I would say fellas, you if, if, if they, you go to one of concerts, you better make sure you go with your lady. Can I ask you though, <laughs> since you had real fanfare, and I think it was at a time when it was like at an all time high, because it wasn't really social media, so people had to really come see y'all. What's like a, a a crazy moment for you with girl fans? Like, did you have a like? Did you guys have like a stalker? Did you have a stalker? Yeah, we had. Bro, there was a group of them. They would come from New York. They would follow every city. Just got one pregnant. Just got a baby from one of them girls. Oh Wait, DJ just yes. bow toward yes. DJ. Yes. Oh yes. my God, I did a, not know. That. There was a group of them, bro. They used to follow us and follow us across the country. Across the country, bro. Whatever the East Coast would like, we just would know. I don't know how they knew where, where our hotels were. One day I knew it was real when I was in my room and one of them called my room, like room, how, how you know what room I'm in? You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, they knew. What's your favorite record that you've ever created from the past? I don't have one. That's hard to say. It's not yeah. Hotline? Nah. Uh -uh. It gotta be your from body? the Blue Star album. I would say, I like Get You Right. Get You Right, okay. That was a real I get you right. Yeah, get you right. Yeah, that was a dope record. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was supposed to be my only solo record on the album. Okay, and he was like, "Nah, nah, nah, we can't, we can't, we can't um pledge our hot commodity." You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we're gonna just um put put rappers on there too. You know what I'm saying? But nah, then they man. had they, but they had they solo song on the album. They 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 weren't they weren't right, man. Do y'all still talk? Um, yeah, what the group? No, no, no. I know you still talk to the group, but um, yeah, I thought, to the yeah. manager. Well, yeah, I talk to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got no issues with him, man. Like the past. Do y'all ever past. talk about the past? Like, man, why did you do this, man? Or why did you do that? Nah, he he would never. But me, I have to forget the past in mm -hmm. order to be so free to be. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I forgave the past, bro. Do you uh do you like when you go in the club and you still hear your records and stuff like that? Because I feel like a lot of it. artists, you know. Don't really have classic records like don't that. Get that. Don't get yeah. that. Yeah, we, we still out here. You know what I'm saying? No, I fine. love it. I love it. So y'all did the Millennium tour together. Do you guys? Would you guys? Uh, or are you guys planning to do more in the future together? Hell yeah, we're gonna do more in the future, man. It's like I don't know what. I don't know why people get so proud. Even if I hate them niggas, guess what? We finna get this money. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's like we built McDonald's. So why would I? Go work at Burger King if I built McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? That, like, that, that don't make sense. So okay. when everybody's able and ready to work, I'm I'm, 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 I'm I do three jobs. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. I feel like you know you one of those artists that love touring. I don't. To me personally, I know a lot of artists, and I feel like sometimes I see people on the road, and I'll be like, man, I don't really, they don't really like touring like that. I feel like you actually enjoy touring. I don't. You don't. You don't. I don't. No way. I like being in the studio. I like having a consistent schedule mm -hmm. just on a day to day, and yeah, I, I like that better. Okay, but but every time I send you on the road, you you look happy. I'm happy every day. I'm happy. I, you know what I'm <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> what I gotta be mad about? But I'm some happy. artists you'll see them backstage and they be like, oh man. Yeah, and I just I just you know I, what I what I like to see about the touring is people still come out and 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 see us and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. the time away and all of that is like after you get a certain age, it's like man. I don't know. Do you okay. ever see yourself retiring? No, I don't. I can't. That's not. That's not a part of my purpose. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, I'm here. I'm here to do music. That's what I, you know, set out to do. I accomplished it. I conquered it, and I'm gonna continue to do it. Do you see yourself ever getting married? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Or more children. I don't, you know, when, when your son turned 19 
and you done finished child support and all that stuff, all of the, the little bullshit that came along with it, and I ain't got to deal with it no more. You know, of course I want a better experience if I do have another kid, but I wanted to be with the right person, and I would definitely want to be married, and I would definitely have to tone my life down to where I want to be able to take my kids to and from school and, you know, just be more of a family man. And that, you know, that, that's like a, a, you know, a different kind of transition for me, but... Is that you know, a goal of yours? Maybe one day. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to speak too much on it because right now, you know, you see what's going on out here. <laughs> so for all the ladies, all the ladies listening, what are you looking for in a woman? I will never tell you that if I if I gave you the answers to the test, you can come and try to you know that's that's like a cheat code. Mm. You just gotta meet me, see me, and if we vibe, you got the qualities that I like, and vice versa. And it, it is what it is. Yeah. Might be the best answer I've ever heard. <laughs> that is a, that is a gr- really good answer. And um, like people think about how many people do that. They'd be like, "Yo, so what are you looking for? I'm looking for this. I'm looking for that. I'm looking." For... And then people, okay, okay, man, I spent all his money trying to be that. And six months from now, he ain't that. Oh shit, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. A year, oh, yeah. a year in, it's over. Heartbroken. Then they got to play I Did You Wrong and all of them songs I made and shit like that. <laughs> But it must be good to be an R&B singer because you could just have somebody, girl, post a picture and then be like, there was a music video. You see how he just thought it in there. What the hell did he just say? You could take somebody, girl, and post Wait, what you talking about? What that man just said to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He set you up. He set you up nice. He what set you up nice. Why you fucking with me, man? He fuck with you. Why you fuck with me, bro? Yeah, man. What? You my dog supposed to fuck with you when you come on the show. <laughs> Before we get out of here, we got a pep talk with Pleasure P. What's up, it's your man Pleasure P. Um, motivationally, um, just to learn to, just learn that it'll never be perfect. Life will never be perfect. So just learn to adjust and adapt to anything and everything. And um, always keep a clear mind, stay focused, and um, speak whatever you want into the universe, and it'll come back to you. Follow-